Hey Chalole, which is bigger, a bird or a dinosaur? A dinosaur. 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 I think dinosaurs would be bigger. Is size even an important factor when deciding if an animal is a bird or a dinosaur? Well, we get that comment a lot, very, very often. They say, well, those animals aren't too big to be birds. Yeah, we do. We get that comment regularly. And we usually think of dinosaurs as these huge animals and birds as these little animals. So let's see, what are some of the bigger dinosaurs? Whoa. Wow, yeah. That one, it's a big one. That's a Spinosaurus. It's 46 feet long. It's really, really big. And then we have the next one that a lot of people know, the Tyrannosaurus, which is 43 feet long. It's not that smaller compared to the Spinosaurus. Look at the size of his head. It's go outside it's just really really big so it's just interesting to see that yes birds can actually be really really big yeah those are some huge birds that is true so it really breaks the mis the conception that we have of birds being these tiny right. animals yes so we know dinosaurs can get big but some dinosaurs are small like this guy coelophysis 10 feet long so still a pretty big animal but compared to these other dinosaurs relatively small or this guy, Sinusaurus. Three and a half feet long. He's way smaller. Isn't he cute, Gabby? Don't you want to just touch him? No, I do not want to touch it. No, <laughs> not at all. Sinusoraptic is a very well-known dinosaur because it's the first known as having feathers, but it actually does not have any feathers. It has filaments. Because of evolutionary ideas, they're redefining the word feather to add filament. But filament is something very, very different from a feather. So Sinusoraptic does not have feathers. It only has filaments. So that's something very important to be said about Sinusoraptics. But even though we just say like, oh, only 3.0 feet long, that's still a big good size, you know, for a dinosaur. Of course, comparing to others, they're really, really small, which shows that we can have gigantic dinosaurs, but also little ones. Yep. And we've got some other animals that are supposed feathered dinosaurs. The first one of these we've talked a lot about is Microraptor. He's a dromaeosaur. Pyroraptor wasn't found with any feather impressions. Evolutionist. Another one we talked a little bit about is Caudipteryx. This is an overactive. Pterosaur. And we've also got a troodontid named Janian Huanlong. And all three of these are found with feathers in the fossil record. But how do we know they're birds and not dinosaurs? We actually have to rely on anatomy. We cannot rely on size because as, as we have seen here, we have really big dinosaurs, so size could not be, cannot be a good criteria for us to tell the difference between what is a dinosaur and what is a bird. We have to rely on anatomy and we have to go back to three features. 
The first one, it's feather. Feathers. Feathers. Real feathers. Not filaments. Yep. That's something very, very important. The second one is swivel wrist, so make it possible yeah, to fold the wing. To fold the wing. Right. And the third one is the shorter tail. Right here, this dinosaur, look how long the tail is. Look how much muscle, heavy muscle tail it has. But when you go to those birds yep. right there, they tails. do not have this long, full of muscle tail. They have a shorter tail, and that's one of the biggest difference between uh, dinosaur and bird. And you can see that all of the birds are gonna have those three features. Yeah. None of those dinosaurs is gonna have those three features. Yeah. Our families, and so people get confused like, could those actually be birds? Well, we've been doing some very interesting research on some of these bigger animals. And if you want to learn more about that, come to our Beyond Bones conference this September. Yes, so if you want to learn about this, the small dinosaurs, 